Sarah, you have written so many books and your latest mm -hmm. book, Flip Side of Failing, where you interviewed over 30 amazing Canadians about their greatness. Can you tell us more about your finding and what can you uh, give feedback to other people? Sure. Well, the ironic thing is that originally it started out as the G part of frog, you know, forever recognize others greatness. I wanted to write a book about greatness. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed because I'm a patriotic person. I interviewed all kinds of amazing Canadians uh, or team did, I should say. And, uh, you know, Everest climbers, Paralympians, award-winning journalists, so forth. And I was sure that this was book, this book was going to give the secrets of greatness. And I tried to write that book twice and it was terrible. It was boring, it was very vanilla, it was not interesting. It was definitely not gonna set the world on fire. And um, having left that book, trying to write it twice, when I came back, I, I ended up reorganizing all the themes into which ones were most often discussed. And I realized, uh, you know, sometimes we have to learn things the hard way. The only uh, theme that arose in every single interview, completely unsolicited, was how important failure was in their path to success, mm -hmm. in their path to greatness. So when I really started to dig in just from that lens, uh, what I heard were things like, I strove to fail. The only way you can get to the Olympics is if you set your body, the, the, um, you know, your goals of what you need to do with your body beyond the physical limits. Uh, Peter Mansbridge, one of our sort of uh, renowned journalists of all time in Canada, he doesn't have a university degree. I had no idea. He's interviewed every major, you know, 13,000 interviews, every president, prime minister, you know, uh, newsmaker in his time. We, it was an opportunity to redefine how we, we our relationship with failure and that instead of it being our downfall mm -hmm. and that it being the um the thing that we avoid like the plague what it, it may actually be our greatest um motivator um the the thing that we will look back on and say that made me that made me grow yes. and where so many folks um are engaging this dialogue i mean i have a few corporate book clubs happening right now in follow-up to um the flip side of failing keynote so much of what's coming out of that book club is that this initially during covid the first six months were struggle the yes. first six months were how do i do my job how do how are my families how's my family going to cope how am I, how am I going to manage my, my consumption of news to, I actually like some of the things that I've done with my life better. I, I prefer working out at home or I like all this extra time I have my family or I never want to go back physically to work full time and, you know, commute through traffic. Um, I, I love the fact that I've developed a walking routine with my neighbors. So, so again, that's, you know, we can see this as a major failure. We've had this global health crisis and, and I'm not trying to minimize that we have lost, you know, so many people to this. So I would never wish us to go through a pandemic and I'm not trying to minimize all the many people who've had losses and all the follow business businesses being, you know, challenged and, or, or businesses that have closed. Um, people who can't be at their family's funerals and so forth. That's by all means, that's just, those are the scars of, of COVID. And there's a lot of people who are also trying to find meaning through this challenging time. So for those of you who are sort of really curious and you want to be able to find your way, navigate your way resiliently through this, um, I would be curious about how we've gotten really fixated on certain things that we'd see as successful. Success is me going to work, wearing a suit, um, getting promoted, getting more education, impressing people at conferences, whatever those things may be. Is it? Mm -hmm. Success is, you know, my kids are on the varsity team and they're going to a fancy college and they're, they're going out with somebody who's cute. And is it success? Um, so, you know, let's, let's examine what we see as success and failure and realize that our definite definition of success, that it's a, you know, a, a um, you know, an, a, our ability to sort of achieve everything that we ever wanted. Maybe in fact, it's the things that we have had to sacrifice or do without that can be more telling of what we most value and we most need.
I think people's mindset also changed during COVID and they're realizing what's important for them. Mm -hmm. And yes, a lot of people are saying, and I feel that this is also kind of an eye opening for leaders that people can work from home. Some mm -hmm. leaders were hesitant, but they had a choice within 72 hours. Everything was set up and they were working from home. I feel that yeah. also changed. And people, when they go for jobs, job interviews in the future, they can ask, what did you do during COVID or can I work from home? I think that yeah. will be a trend that people will ask. Yes, absolutely. Without a doubt, never will we see the exact same um, work. I don't think we'll see schools, colleges, universities, high schools, even elementary schools the same. Um, I think we are going to see much greater um, control over um, hand hygiene and, you know, we'll be very responsive to these sorts of things in the future. It's it, it, we have to find meaning. We are a meaning making machine, us human beings. We have to find meaning out of this. Um, and it, it, all the suffering and all of the, all of the costs cannot be for nothing. Yes. So yeah, I agree with you. I think that there's a lot that we can learn from it and a lot that we will, we will lean into and become as a result of this. Those are great tips. And I will put uh, your book uh, and the Amazon down in the below in the link. Yes, that's the book. And tune in next time for my final question with Sarah.